Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. Today I'd like to talk about a new feature in iOS 15.2 that allows you to see the service history of the parts repaired in your device. I'd also like to go over some misconceptions that I'm reading about this service in the comment sections of my own YouTube videos and on several of the news articles that I've been looking at so that people don't get the wrong idea about this feature and think that their phone has not been tampered with when it actually has been. Now, I think this is actually a cool idea. I made it no secret here that I like to buy my items used. I prefer purchasing used to purchasing new for several reasons. A, I get to save money, which is cool. I could spend money on other things. B, I get to get a better device for any given budget if I'm willing to buy something used. I can get something with better specs if I'm willing to accept a scuff on the back of it or something like that. And C, I don't always want to support the manufacturer that I'm purchasing something from. Sometimes I'm kind of stuck or forced to get this due to lack of choice in a particular area. And when that happens, I'd rather buy used so that I'm not supporting a manufacturer that I don't want to support. I am all for people buying and selling used devices. I think it's great, and I encourage it whenever possible. The camera that I'm talking to right now is a camera I got used for half price because there's a broken flash. Since I don't use it for taking pictures, I don't care about the flash. It's really cool that I got a Sony A5100 for $250 several years ago. So this is the way it looks. It'll tell you whether or not something is genuine, and it says parts and service history, and it says display unknown part. Now, it says prior to iOS 15.2, these messages would only alert users to the presence of unknown parts. Now the parts and service history will only appear if something inside the phone has been replaced, otherwise it won't be visible. Genuine Apple parts will include links to the corresponding service information on the web, including the exact date and time, so you can actually know when the device was serviced, which again, is pretty cool. You have a lot of people who sell these devices who won't tell you what they did to them. So if you have a seller that says this has never been opened or repaired, and then he sells it to you and you see this message, you know that something's up with that and you can kind of get a gauge for there having been some dishonesty in your transaction. And if you're using an online marketplace that allows you to file chargebacks or PayPal claims, it will allow you to get your full money back because you were lied to. And honestly, I think it's kind of cool to kind of have an idea of what happened to your device. When I worked at Avatar Studios, when I had my internship, and then when I got promoted to a technician, we were expected to keep a log when we fixed certain devices of what we did to them, and that log went back to the 80s. So you could see this Poltec EQP whatever, this Poltec equalizer, this LA-2A, this is what we did to it. This is the date and time. This is why we did this to it. This is what we replaced it with. It was really, really cool. And if we sold those devices or we gave them to another studio, it would sometimes be expected that we give them this logbook along with it. And I think it's cool to have a digital record of that on your device. Now, there do appear to be some misconceptions in the comment section about what this actually will do. And I want to tell you why I believe these to be misconceptions so that people don't go around thinking that they're getting something that they're actually not. So Robert Newman, the top voted comment, says this empowers users in making decisions. A lot of third-party shops will no longer be able to get away with pretending they are using genuine parts when they are not. When Apple starts selling genuine parts and proper tools to users, they're going to be more expensive than the gray market parts. They're not going to be selling what iFixit sells. They'll be selling the proper tools for the job. This is evident from the artwork Apple published alongside their announcement, where the repair is not going to be using a suction cup but a professional jig that gives greater control. They will also tell you to use an anti-static mat, and this alone may cost $40. Now, I've never seen an anti-static mat cost $40, but just digging into some of the elements of that post, he said that this means that you won't be able to get away with pretending you're using a genuine part uh, when you're not. And that's not true. And if we go over how this feature works, you'll get a greater idea of why that's the case. So as I've explained in prior videos, this feature doesn't try and detect whether or not this is an Apple original battery. It doesn't detect if this is an Apple original screen. All it's doing is trying to see if it is matching to the serial number of what came inside the device initially. So for example, let's say you have an iPhone 13 and you have an original battery and I take that battery out of your phone. I then go to the Apple store and I buy an identical iPhone 13 from the same batch. I take the battery out of that and I put it in your phone. It's gonna give me a warning message, even though the battery is an original Apple battery. The same thing is true with the screen. If I take the screen off of, the, of this phone and then I replace it with a screen from another iPhone that I bought at an Apple store that has an original screen, 
it will still give me some sort of message. This functionality is not advanced enough to be able to actually detect the type of part being put in the device. It simply tells if anything has ever been changed at all. And for that reason, you have repair shops that look to get around it. So for instance, let's say that I was actually using a battery from another iPhone, right? And I put the battery in the customer's phone and it now gives an error message that says this may not be authentic or original or error or whatever. That's going to decrease the confidence that my customer has in me. Now, I can explain to the customer that it's going to show this message even if I get a battery from the Apple store. But that's going to be a pain in the ass conversation, particularly if I am new in the business and I have zero Google reviews, zero Yelp reviews, zero Facebook reviews, no online presence. So what I may do to avoid this conflict altogether is I may take the chip from the old battery, take it off, and then solder it onto the new battery. If I do this, you will never have any idea that I replaced the battery in the foam, even if I put a knockoff, piece of shit, garbage, lowest quality on earth battery in there, the phone is not looking to detect anything advanced with the battery, it's simply looking to see if the serial matches. The same is true with the screen. This is even more common with screen repairs. So if you wish to retain certain functionality, like True Tone and everything else, when you use a different screen, you need to program the screen. You need to grab the information from the old screen and then put it onto the new screen. And many repair shops are already doing this. And when this is done, I sincerely doubt that the phone is going to be able to tell that a new screen has been put in there. So I could put a different screen in there, even a screen that's not an Apple screen. And as long as I have this little programmer that sits on our desk in the store and at most professional iPhone repair shops now, the phone itself is not going to know that I changed its screen. This is an, an, an important thing to mention because he is under the idea that this means that, a, uh, that you can't misrepresent what's in the phone. And it's quite the opposite. And the, the reason that people are going to this extent to fool the system is because we don't have the tools to pair a new part to the device in the world of independent repair. Since we don't get access to the tools necessary to be able to pair things properly, we are not able to make use of this. I have no way of making use of this service history feature. The only thing I can do if I want my customer to not think that I've put something in their device that is not authentic or it's going to give them an error, even if it is authentic, is to take the information from the old one and copy it over to the new one. If I do that, you will never have a clue that I opened your device, even if the service history feature says that there is, um, that there is no service there it's not going to tell you this. So I think it's important that you understand that many iPhones are still going to be sold with nothing in their service history that may be using the cheapest screens possible and the cheapest batteries possible, and you're never going to know. Personally, I'm not a fan of the way they implemented this with batteries, and let me explain why. Who are the repair shops that are going to take the information from the old battery and solder to the new one rather than have a conversation with their customers? It's going to be the shops that don't have the reputation to have this conversation properly. If I tell my customer, after 13 years in business, over 200 Yelp reviews, 1,000 Google reviews, being featured on CBC News and all these other outlets, listen, here's the way this works. My customer's not going to care about an error. They trust me. They know that we have a reputation. 2008 Lewis telling them this, they probably would have thought that I was scamming them. They would have seen the message and went, eh. So it's new repair shops that have less trust built up with the consumer. And these are going to be shops that are less experienced. They have less soldering experience. They have less skills. Typically in this business, you start out doing really, really basic repairs, like, you know, just charge ports and screens. You slowly graduate to doing more difficult ones. Then you graduate to board repair and data recovery and everything else. So the shops that are going to be the shops that have the most difficulty with getting trust from customers are going to be the newest ones. So we've put together a system that incentivizes the least experienced people in the independent repair business to do soldering on a battery. Now, it is possible to solder this chip onto a lithium-ion battery safely. That being said, it is a safer repair to do to replace the battery and call it a day than it is to replace the battery and solder a chip onto the battery. Forcing people to solder a chip onto the battery to avoid this message means that you are increasing the likelihood of the repair being less safe. And given that it's going to be the newer shops that don't have that rapport built up with their customers, that don't have that great base of reviews that builds consumer trust, that are going to be incentivized to do this, 
it is actually the least experienced independent repair shops that are going to be incentivized to do something that adds danger to a repair. I don't personally like the idea that we're encouraging people that have very low experience, if they wish to not have this error message, even when using an original battery, to have to solder something from your old battery onto the new one. I don't think that's a that's a great thing and that's a downside of this. Further, since True Tone pairing tools are not made available to independent repair shops, again, the only way you're going to get that to work is by using a programming tool that's going to copy the data from the old screen to the new screen. And when I copy the data from the old screen to the new screen, the phone is not going to know the screen was replaced and you're not going to see any of this. So a lot of people, again, this person seems to be commenting from a place of assuming that third-party repair shops are screwing them and that this is going to stop them from screwing them, when in reality, um, it's, it's not at all. Again, I could literally put the cheapest par garbage parts into your phone and you would not have any idea with this feature as long as I have the just b most rudimentary understanding of how an iPhone works and the most basic of tools in my shop. Y again, is someone doing this work at home going to have these tools or be able to solder on a battery? Probably not. You're probably not going to buy a screen programmer if you're just doing one one-off repair. But if you are a major refurbishing company that's selling on eBay and Amazon, it's probably worth it to you to be able to get a higher value for your phones by lying and telling people that it is something when it, that it hasn't been fixed when it has been by telling people it has an original screen when it don't to just buy one of these cheap little tools and copy all the data over. This is, it really do, is not going to add a lot of time to the repair. Don't get me wrong, it's a pain in the ass. And for me, I don't consider it worth doing. But it's not going to add enough. Like if you're a major refurbisher and this is a big profit center for you, by all means, they're copying the data from the old one to the new one, and you're not going to have a clue. So I just hope that this does not instill people with a false sense of security, because if it does, then they're probably going to lose confidence in the in this feature, this functionality, Apple, and also the used marketplace altogether. Um, that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and uh, I will talk to you in the next video. And so will Mr. Clinton. This is Clinton the cat, by the way. Isn't he cute? He's my Clinton. He's a genuine Clinton cat. He's not a unknown Clinton. Good boy.